This is Professor Thad Starner. Today we're going to talk about transistors. In particular, we're going to talk about transistors as they relate to uh, switch switches. Now, most people know transistors from um, integrated circuits, uh, but we're going to use the one uh, in isolation just to show you the principles of it. Now, the symbol for a transistor is this. You have a base here, a collector here, and an emitter here. And a lot of people actually do a circle around the whole thing, um, just to be clear what's going on. Now, uh, let me label these things. Collector, emitter, base. Now, when there is enough voltage on the base, the, or enough current going through the base, uh, the transistor goes into what's called saturation, and current is allowed to flow from the collector to the emitter. Um, now, you can actually use a transistor as an amplifier or in all sorts of other modes as well, but we're just going to use it basically as a switch here. So we're going to think of it basically having no current going in the base and no current going from, from the collector to the emitter to uh, current going into the base, uh, causing the thing to fully switch so that current is allowed to, to go through the, from the collector to emitter unimpeded. Now the transistors we're using are called NPN transistors uh, and we'll probably be using the 2222 model which is a classic transistor. They're easily acquired. You can go to your local radio shack and get some. Now what, we're, what purpose we're going to put these things into is for um, uh, using it with our pick so we can actually switch a relay um, to uh, control, say, a 120 volt DC motor or something else that takes a lot of current. Now, our pick, as we know, only can, we have an output line on the pick, it only can do uh, either you know, 0 volt volts or 5 volts. But if I have a relay that, let's draw the relay quickly that only uh, switches when it has 12 volts at, say, you know, 50 milliamps or so, and our pick only has 5 volts at 20 milliamps max, and we're in trouble. We need something to basically amplify the signal out of the pick so we can throw this relay. And that's how we're going to use our transistor. So let me start working on that circuit. And I'll show you how, this is how we're going to do this. So first, let me draw the pick. Here's our pick. Now we're going to have our output line here. And I'm going to include the ground line on the pick. So GND for ground. And you'll see why in a few minutes. Now the output line for our pick is going to go into our transistor. I'm going to tie the transistor ground to um, the pick ground. And now I'm going to have it go up through my relay and up to my 12 volts DC. Now I'm not getting the 12 volts DC from a battery, from a power supply, whatever. But I know that this is 5 volts here, that's 12 volts there. So in order to avoid um, some problems, I need to protect my pick a little bit. First, let me draw in the rest of the relay. Let's assume I have a motor here that I want to control, and I have a voltage source that's 120 volts AC. Okay, so the relay is tripped, the motor runs. Um, <coughs> I'm also going to put a diode here uh, that I'll talk about in just a little bit, um, but that just completes the circuit. Now I said I need to protect my pick. Why do I need to protect my pick? Well, first of all, if I, my pick switches to 5 volts and my transistor is turned on, it turns out that I'm basically putting power to ground. That doesn't work very well. It's not quite true. Basically, when I ever have, let's, let me label my collector, emitter, and base again. Um, whenever I have these NPN um, 222s, I believe uh, in saturation, saturation. I believe the um, the voltage they need uh, to go to trigger here is 0.6 volts. So we get a 0.6 uh, volt drop 
between the base and the emitter. Um, but the problem is I'm still basically putting 5 volts to ground. So I'm going to put a resistor here. And that resistor, for convenience, is going to get 2 kilo ohms. And that guarantees that you know I'm not going to run power to ground. Also, with till, till, 2 kilo ohms at 5 volts, I'll get enough current that I'm sure the base saturates and I know the current is going to go from, from collector to emitter. I'm also, because I'm paranoid, going to put a diode here so that current can come, only come out of the pick. It can't go back in. That way, if I have any problem with how I hook things up, you know, it's going to be stopped before I short out my pick. Okay, so now what happens with this? Well, when there's no current or no voltage, the pick is put to zero, um, uh, no current's going to ground, this base is not in saturation, this transistor is not in saturation, it does not allow current to go through it. Okay, so it's basically acting as a switch. Now, when I turn the pick to 5 volts, now there's current going through here. You know, it's, it's not much because there's a 2 kilo ohm resistor here, but it doesn't take much to put a transistor into saturation. So then it allows current to pass through the circuit. Um, I get a little voltage drop here between, uh, uh, between collector to emitter. Oftentimes with these sorts of transistors, transistors I get a 0.3 volt uh, drop here. You can look at the spec sheet for that. But what happens is now the current is pretty much free to run to ground. The uh, coil gets a nice field on it, and uh, the um, uh, switch is closed on the relay and the motor runs. Okay, when, so now the motor is running, I turn the pick off, um, so that means this goes out of saturation, the, the current is stopped from here, and now the, uh, the relay uh, is turned off, the switch is turned off, the motor stops. But now, there's something I want you to think about. When I turn off the relay, um, I've had this big field and we're going to talk about this later with inductors. But whenever I have a, a current going through a relay, I have a big field that gets created. And when I turn off the power, it collapses onto the coil and creates what's called a back EMF or a back voltage. So suddenly the voltage here goes negative, things collapsing on. What I'm doing is I'm allowing that voltage to actually go um, uh, through the diode back to itself so it cancels itself out in this little part of the circuit. Um, so I'm protecting my transistor from getting a, a high negative voltage that might actually hurt it. And that's the point of this, this uh, diode. Oftentimes you put diodes like this um, uh, across a relay or across a motor or anything that might have a large inductor in it um, to be safe. Now in general what the relays we're going to be working with is not going to matter uh, but here I'm doing it just for completeness sake. Um, and um, you can actually look at your transistor to see how much voltage it can handle, what tolerances it has. Okay. So that's how we can actually use uh, 5 volts out of the pick to control a transistor to throw 12 volts to the, vo to the coil of a relay to switch, switch the switch in the relay to turn on to turn on a 120 volt motor. Okay, that's it. Talk to you next time.